Hello and welcome to another episode of 360 Health. I am Ogechiko Okikwe. The Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, CISLAC, has called on the Castina State Executive and Legislative Arm of Government and other relevant stakeholders to impose a high tax on tobacco use in the state. This is to ensure that the price of the commodity is increased, which will in turn reduce the demand drastically to the barest minimum. A senior program officer of the center, Solomon Adoga, during the multi-sectoral meeting with CSO government officials, including the media held in the Casina State Capital, said that more people die every year from smoking than from murder, AIDS, suicide, drug, car crashes, and alcohol combined. He explained that CISLAC extended its campaign and advocacy on tobacco control to Castina State, where tobacco smoking cuts across all genders to implement a project on tobacco tax advocacy in Nigeria, with support from Tax Justice Network Africa. On his part, a member of the Castina Coalition Civil Society Organization, Bashir Rowan, described the advocacy as timely, advising relevant authorities to also ban the importation and manufacturing of tobacco which he believes is the only possible way to deter people from smoking. The World Health Organization, WHO, has raised concerns over the alarming toll of viral hepatitis infection, which continues to claim the lives of approximately 3,500 people every day worldwide. Based on the 2024 Global Hepatitis Report released at the World Hepatitis Summit 2024 in Lisbon. Portugal, the organization has emphasized the urgent need for intensified efforts to combat its silence epidemic, which is the second leading infection cause of death globally, with 1.3 million deaths per year. The same as tuberculosis, a top infectious killer, viral hepatitis, characterized by inflammation of the liver due to viral infection, comprises of hepatitis A, B, C, and E viruses. The Nigerian Center for Disease Control and Prevention has reported one death and confirmed 15 new cases of Lassa fever within one week across the nation. The NCDC said this in a situation report for week 13, published on its website. Lassa fever is an acute viral illness transmitted to humans through contact with food or household items, contaminated by infected rodents or contaminated person. Its symptoms include fever, headache, sore throat, general body weakness, cough, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, muscle pains, chest pain, and in severe cases, unplanned bleeding from ears, eyes, nose, mouth, and other body openings. The NCDC noted a decrease in the number of confirmed cases from 25 cases in week 12 to 15 cases in the reporting week, although the number of suspected cases increased compared to the same period in 2023. Cumulatively from week 1 to 13, the country recorded 806 confirmed cases and 150 deaths with a case fatality rate of 18.6% higher than the CFR for the same period in 2023. According to the report, no health worker was infected in the reporting week and individuals between the ages of 31 and 40 were mostly affected by the infection. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be discussing kidney health care and kidney disease basics. Welcome back. In humans, Kidneys are two reddish brown bean shaped blood filtering organs that are a multi lobal form of mammalian kidney, usually without signs of external lobulation, that are located on the left right in the small bowl space and in adult humans are about 12 centimeters. The kidney participates in the control of the volume of various blood fluids, acid base balance, various electrolytes, concentration, and removal of toxins. According to the National Library of Medicine, chronic kidney disease has been recognized as a leading public health program worldwide. The global estimated prevalence of CKD is 13.4% and patients with kidney failure needing rental replacement therapy are estimated between 5 and 7 million. However, diets play a crucial role in managing kidney health, especially for individuals with existing kidney condition. However, 
the recommendation to quit smoking cannot be overemphasized, as smoking not only damages the kidney directly, but also worsens conditions like diabetes and hypertension. While joining me to discuss further is founder of Safe Throw Medical and also a public health enthusiast, Dr. Glory Alakba. Thank you for joining me on the program. So as a professional, can you expand our knowledge on the job of kidney in the human body? Okay, so for the kidneys, they have a number of uh, functions that could be grouped into headings. So we can have regulatory function, endocrine function. Um, we could also have the kidneys, you know, excreting waste. So excretory functions as well, it's there. And so for endocrine functions and all that, they help to produce vitamin D and also they help to produce erythropoietin. These are hormones that help to for vitamin D for bone formation and bone strength and also for erythropoietin to produce red blood cells and all that. But well, the very important function of the kidneys that cannot be overemphasized and cannot be put under the shelf is the excretory function. So it helps excrete waste from the body and that's one of the very, very major function of the kidneys. And that's why when we pass out, um, uh, when, there's, when, when we take uh, drugs, you know, or take water and all that, it filters whatever it is, whatever chemicals we have taken in, and then we excrete their um, urine. And so um, the kidneys are also very important for acid-base balance, for blood pressure control, because the hormones they also produce like angiotensin, converting enzymes, all these things help to control blood pressure. So there are mechanisms in place by the kidneys to help control blood pressure. And that's why in people with CKDs, uh, that's chronic kidney disease, you can see them coming down with high blood pressure as well. So the kidneys are very, very, very important in all these functions. And so another major, major thing that the kidney does is to ensure that Whatever toxins you have taken in or whatever drug you have taken in, some drugs are metabolized by the kidney. So they are broken down by the kidneys for it to be able to function well in the system. And so these are very important functions of the kidney that one needs to put in mind to ensure that we protect our kidneys very, very well. Because it helps us to maintain our fluids and help us to maintain tox um, to excrete toxins and also help us to maintain blood pressure, which is very important, and other things like and red blood cell. Red blood cell um, is important because it helps us to uh, carry oxygen round, you know, and all that. So it helps us to also keep our blood alive, it's the life lifeline, you know, and, and all that for the blood. So it's quite important. The kidneys. The kidneys are very, very important organs in the body, and one needs to really protect them. Okay, like you said, we have two kidneys. So in the case where one kidney fails, how long can an individual survive with the other kidney? Well, the way it is, if the other kidney is very good, that there's no problem with the other kidney, you can survive for as long as your lifespan. So that's the good thing about it. So if one kidney fails, the other kidney can pick up and then can work for the person. But the problem comes where the other kidney doesn't really work, and so the patient comes down with kidney symptoms, uh, their kidney failure symptoms. So what factor contributes to high prevalence of chronic kidney problem amongst Africa, particularly Nigerians? And what will you say are the best methods for prevention? Okay, so that's a very important question because um, the kidney, kidney problems are on the increase now. And so this is because of poorly controlled, in our setting, poorly controlled diabetes, poorly controlled hypertension, and then uh, viral diseases like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, all these can damage one's kidney if left untreated or left uncontrolled. So these diseases are the commonest causes of um, kidney failure in our setting. So there are other causes of kidney failure, um, chronic use of um, he heavy metal containing creams, like bleaching creams, um, the use of, you know, some, you know, heavy metals, lead, mercury containing products and all that. So these things can also damage the kidney. And also chronic use, use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, 
uh, like ibuprofen, diclofenac. So chronic use, that's, you always use them to suppress pain. So people who do that tend to put a lot of pressure on their kidneys to excrete toxic waste that is, you know, that these drugs contain. And so from there, you can damage the kidneys using chronic use of NSAIDs. And that's long-term use of these drugs. And there are other drugs too as well that can damage the kidneys. And so it is very important to always be mindful of our kidneys' health. It's very important because it's very expensive to, to, to you know, manage. That's kidney problems, quite expensive to manage. So the prevention is definitely better than cure. And so those are some of the causes of kidney failure. And then to manage these causes, of course, is to ensure that underlying causes like diabetes, hypertension, that kept controlled. So if you are diagnosed of, you know, um, hypertension or diabetes, or you have any of these viral infections that I mentioned, what you need to do is to ensure that you start treatment as early as possible. And then you always take your drugs. It's like a lifetime thing. Some of this, um, like hypertension, diabetes, is, it doesn't have a cure. It's not something you would take today and say, tomorrow I'm cured, I'm not going to take it again. Once you are diagnosed of these things, you always measure your blood pressure, always check your blood glucose level, that's your blood sugar level. And then you always take your drugs and see your doctors as as, as at when due. And then for viral infections as well, for, thankfully for hepatitis C, it has a cure. So the earlier one, you know, one gets screened of these viruses and then um, you start treatment immediately if you are found positive to have hepatitis C, you can achieve cure, like you can actually be cured of hepatitis C. But if the, the hepatitis, hepatitis B, you can't get cured, but it can be controlled as well. Viral load can be controlled. And then the same thing for HIV. So there's no cure at the moment for those ones. And then to prevent hepatitis B, if you don't have it at all, it is very important to get vaccinated against hepatitis B. There's a vaccine for hepatitis B and um, hepatitis B. And so these are some of the measures. And then for people who have serious pains, say chronic pain, low back pain, you know, um, what else? Maybe people who use painkillers, to help them with their bone pain or their abdominal pain and all that. Instead of using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, like I mentioned, ibuprofen, diclofenac, and the rest like, of them like that, it's better to step down your analgesics, that's your painkillers, ask your doctors to change your drugs for you, you know, from the long-term use of those other drugs that I've mentioned to a safer one for your kidneys. So there are different drugs that can be safe for your kidneys that you wouldn't have to abuse to achieve um, to achieve results. That's to help with your pain, and so it's very important to have these things in mind. And then if you are using bleaching creams, stop using bleaching creams. It's it's not it's not there's no there's no use for it at all. There is no benefits of using bleaching creams. Rather, rather you are putting so much pressure on your kidneys. Like I mentioned, the kidneys have excretory function. That, what that means is we take a lot of toxic waste in. Sorry, we take a lot of things, you know, through our food, through our drugs, through chemicals, so many things that we inhale. What the kidney does is to help excrete those toxic waste out of their system. And so if you keep bombarding your kidneys with a lot of work to do, it's just like machines. If you keep making them work and work and work over time, over time, there will be, you know, there will be wear and tear, and then the kidneys will fail. So, what would you say are the early symptoms of kidney diseases? So, people coming down with, you know, facial puffiness, early morning facial puffiness. You wake up in the morning, you don't have a, you, you usually do not have swollen face, but you wake up in the morning and see that your face is swollen, and then as the day goes by, it reduces, and then you start seeing that fluid accumulates in your body. Um, leg swelling and all that and then sometimes um, you could have flank swelling that's where the kidneys are located they're located at the flank the lumbar region and so you see if you see having flank swelling the other um, problems that could be associated with kidney failure so once you start seeing those things and then you start having your urine start foaming uh, frothy urine so when you pee and then you see that excessive foam Make, comes out of the urine, it means that you are leaking protein out of the urine, and that's one of the markers of kidney damage. So kidney disease, like Nigerians seems to be 
in the receiving end. So would you say it's because of our diet or weather or our, life, our lifestyle? So how can one maintain good health, good health, um, kidney health and diet lifestyle? Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, we need to always stay hydrated. Our weather is very hot. You sweat a lot. Uh, you, you lose a lot of fluid through insensible loss from our sweat, from our urine, from, you know, even from breath from feces and all that. So since we sweat a lot and it's a very hot region, always stay hydrated, drink a lot of water. So it's recommended you take up to four to six liters of water a day. So if you want to measure it, if you are the type that takes sachet water, you can drink up to six to 10 sachet water a day. You can, if you take bottled water, you can take up to maybe eight to 10 or six to 10 as well, depending on whatever you take. So just stay hydrated. All right, we'll take a short break and be right back. Welcome back. Still with me on the show is Dr. Gloria Alakba. So for someone with kidney disease, Aside looking at um, transplant options, what are other treatment options available? Uh, so it depends on the stage of the kidney disease. So we have five stages, um, stage one to five. Stage one, two, three. Uh, at, at that stage, there could be, what we do is to halt the progress to the worst stage. So stage four, five are like end stage kidney disease. The, the bad parts where one will have to go for transplants or renal replacement therapy, where they could do, where they could do a dialysis, keep the person alive with daily dialysis. Dialysis is like using a machine to do what the kidney does, um, the respiratory functions of the kidneys and all that. So, aside from transplants, if a person gets to stage four or five. Uh, end stage kidney disease. So, aside from transplants, what could really help the person, you know, prolong life and all that and give a good quality of life would be to go for dialysis. And so, that's like the artificial kidney for machines to do what kidney um, is, is meant to do, the respiratory functions of kidneys. So, depending on what the person has, they will have to place the person on either salvage dialysis or you know continuous dialysis so dialysis will be your maintenance dialysis so salvage dialysis is maybe trying to revert the damage done to the kidney to maybe stage one or to a better stage to pre-morbid state or maintenance dialysis is when the continue the person is continuous on dialysis for a long time a long long time so these are the options available. Aside from that, once we can remove the offending agents, that's the underlying causes of the kidney failure. You are going to help the person a long way that try to halt maybe the progression of kidney failure from diabetes, from hypertension, um, or if you can halt it from viral infections and all that. So if you treat the underlying causes, you can help the person have a better kidney uh, function. And so if the kidney is already damaged, it's already at end stage, the best thing to do is actually transplant. But to keep the person alive, because transplant is quite expensive, really, really expensive. So you can always do daily dialysis and all that. And so dialysis all depends on the prescription by the doctor. So you can place the person on weekly dialysis or three times in a week or, um, every day depending on um the situation at hand at the moment so that's those are the options available okay so as humans how often do you think kidney function can be checked to avoid kidney issues so it would be important for one to you know if you if for now it i would divide it into two groups of people. So if you are relatively healthy, no diabetes, no hypertension, you have no comorbidities, 
it will be important for you to always see your doctor maybe every three months or every six months to check. So they can do a simple urinalysis, check your urine using strips and all that. So it will be important to do that three months, six months, yearly, depending if you're a very healthy person. Just always check your kidneys, do viral screening, check your blood pressure, uh, check your blood sugar level, you know, and always ensure that you stay hydrated and all that. So if you keep doing all these things, you can always check your kidney function or you do a, you do a kidney function test, check your um, urea, creatinine and other electrolytes, potassium, chloride, sodium, all those things. If you check them yearly and it's okay, you can continue doing that yearly or, you know, um, six months or quarterly. So for someone who has comorbidities, it's important to always check your kidney functions, probably uh, maybe monthly, if, 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 if possible, yes, monthly or quarterly as well. And then if you already have an established kidney disease, you need to always see your doctors as prescribed. If they tell you come and see us so, so time, you have to adhere strictly to that clinic visit. So that it will not progress to the worst stage of kidney disease. So that's how it goes. So it's always good to see your doctor and check your health regularly, regularly. So you can always keep a time to it. If you want to do it yearly, depending on your on on where you belong, don't do it yearly. You can choose your birthday. You can choose the dates that you'll not forget. So you always do that. Very important. It's very important to do that. So that we know they are chronic and acute kidney diseases. So can you, ex can you explain to us the differences? Okay, so acute kidney injury, what we call AKI uh, for short is, I think like, like the word imply acute, is sudden damage to the kidneys. And so the kidneys have been fine, they've been doing well, but because of probably chronic, well, maybe there are different causes. So there are causes that is, is not the renal cause, it's not the kidney itself that caused it. It's pre-renal AKI, we call that pre-renal AKI. And then there's the renal causes, that's intrinsic cause from the kidneys itself. And then there's um, a post-renal cause. And so the pre-renal cause can come from anything that will give you hypovolemia. Hypovolemia is low uh, level of fluid in the body. So dehydration, anything that can cause dehydration. So when you're not taking enough water, or you are losing a lot of water from diarrhea, vomiting, um, severe blood loss, these things can shut down the kidneys accurately. And so if you have anything that will have, anything that can cause circulatory um, dysfunction and all that, so you're not getting enough blood to the kidneys because the kidneys can get up to 25% of cardiac output. So if there is no blood supply to the kidneys, you can shut it down accurately. Are there Hello? measures you think the government should carry out to reduce the burden of those with kidney diseases? Yes, yes, I got that. So um, for the government, what they should do, um, what um, I encourage the government to do is to ensure that, you know, um, the equipment, the machines, uh, to ensure that we have adequate dialysis in our centers, tertiary hospitals, and other, you know, um, secondary uh, facilities as well. I think this should be made available because there are a rising, rising number of people coming down with kidney problems. And so if the government makes these things available, it will improve quality of life. So we have the dialysis machine, we should have a good nephrology unit, so well-equipped nephrology center. Um, also, it will be important for government to ensure and emphasize prevention, prevention. So prevention of kidney problems. That's like the number one thing. Let government, you know, um, bring up measures to, you know, support NGOs that are, you know, carrying out campaigns against chronic kidney diseases and um, acute kidney injury and all that. So. It's very important for government to, you know, come into the aid of people and then see that we um, 
stop this menace that's coming up gradually. And also regulatory, regulatory function of the government who cannot be um, you know, put under the shelf. We need to understand that drugs, um, drug abuse can also cause a major um, kidney problem. So if you abuse, you know, um, substances that um, had drugs and all that, it could predispose one to kidney problems. So if hard measures or punitive measures or strict measures are put in place by the government to ensure that people don't peddle drugs, people don't, you know, sell drugs to young people and all that without, and even if for controlled drugs, they actually need to be controlled. They really need to be controlled so people don't abuse them. So these are some of the measures the government can do to ensure that we stop this menace of kidney problem. Okay. Founder, yeah, safe through medical, and also a public health enthusiast, Dr. Gloria Alakwa. Thank you for lending your thought on the program. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, and that's all we can take on this episode of the program. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.